All right, quick disclaimer at the beginning of the video. This is just the knowledge that I have gained. As with anything with real money, if you are gonna spend your real money, please do more research than just watching my video, as well as weigh my opinion against your own and try to come up with the best decision you can for your account. I appreciate you watching the video, however, and I hope it helps. All right, so today I'd like to go over a topic that I don't believe is covered at all, which is how to efficiently well out, how much to well out, when to well out, and what to well out on. For the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about how much to well out, and how much to well out, I'm just gonna use as a simple vault. I'm gonna assume you're using one vault, maybe two, uh, or else you're not really a well, you're just a guy who's throwing a couple bucks at the video game. Now, back when I was just starting this game out, I was a League of Legends coach, and I made a good bit of side PayPal money, and I threw a crate and a vault here and there, so I'm sure I've got probably three or four vaults down in my time. That being said, there are definitely some straight up stupid purchases you can do, and some that uh, really are pretty efficient. All right, so let's get straight into it. I'm gonna assume you got your vault. After that, one of the most primary best, most efficient things you can possibly do in this game is doing your refreshes, be it coming up here, paying for all your sims for these, just refreshing everything out so you make sure you got all of them. You know, one of the best things you can do is continually to farm mods, no matter what part of the game you are in. Mods are literally always important and they're gonna to continue to be more and more important as you get more of them and as your roster grows. So if you are gonna well out in this game, Cut five to 10% of the crystals you well out on and just have them on the side always. So you can always sim mods. <laughs> All right, so I just got this mod from uh, simming and it is having a good potential to be a good mod here. My highest speed cross is only 17. So, well, that's the way it goes, I guess. Also farming gear is also more efficient uh, than purchasing it. So if you're not farming a hard node right now, having the energy aside just to continually farm gear will help. I figure you guys would want to see the Zay the Sim. Come on, of course. All right, so that about covers it for energy. Let's start going over other things that are good to well on. So I've gone over these guys in the past, but really it cannot be overstated. Night Sister are a amazing team, especially if you're welling out early, because this is a team that you can bypass all of the restrictions of trying to get a hero's journey, legendary. There, there's literally no legendaries or anything in here. You can just purchase these characters, straight up purchase them. And in the beginning of your shard, you will absolutely dominate, which will snowball you over time. Just to reiterate the point really quickly, I mean, you can look here and, and see in this whole list that any of these characters are gonna take five characters minimum, you know, to, to get a real big unlock. So for that reason, um, you don't have to wait around for them to show up is the thing I'm trying to make here is the Night Sisters. You just farm them. Like you don't have to wait, okay, well, I have the characters now. I hope he shows up in three months. No, it's just you farm them. You get first place in the arena if you're early in the shard or at least top 50 if you're not because you can beat Jevin and Revan and you do the tank and the Sith and everything else. Eh, I try not to go in the Night Sisters too much because I can talk about them forever, but just throw this point in there real quick. And that pack I'm talking about with Night Sisters is a really efficient purchase. It splits up the shards, so you're going to get like 10 shards of the other characters, and you're guaranteed like 10 shards of the new one, like Night Sister, Zombie, Towson, etc. And it's going to look exactly like this pack's for $6.99, and it's pretty efficient to purchase if you decide to go the Night Sister route. So we're here talking about packs, and I mentioned the $6.99 Night Sister pack's a good one, but why are the other packs that are good? Well, it's probably easier to tell you the packs that aren't good, and that's going to be almost all of them. The ones that are terrible are like these ultimate bundles, because a lot of these characters that they throw in there with them are extremely easy to farm. They'll throw in like crappy ones with good ones to try to bait you. You do get a nice source of omegas, etc., but if you look at the price, they want $80 for this. So if you go and look at the store, I mean, that's almost what, like $13,000? 12,000 crystals right about there. Those These shards are not worth that amount of crystals. You can get way better efficient purchases with those amount of crystals. There's a couple exceptions to these rules. Sometimes these flat bundles like this one here can be a good price point. Uh, if you are going up to a journey and you need the character at the last second, these aren't too bad to purchase. The last thing I should cover when it comes to packs is marquee packs. Now there's none in the store right now. The flat marquee packs, which I believe now they're $20 to give you crystals, um, aren't actually too bad of a deal if you're planning to farm that character in the long term anyway. It will actually save you money over the, that period of time. 
Uh, unfortunately, that about ends it for the packs. There's not too many good deals. You're gonna see a beginner pack for like $5. That one's acceptable. Um, there's some argument to be made for the Darth Vader one, but other than that, I would say just kind of stay away from the larger packs in general. Also, just to clarify, when I'm saying marquee packs, I'm talking the flat amount of shards for a flat amount of US currency. I'm not talking about purchasing the crystal pack to try to get shards. Those are rip off. I've never done that and will probably never do that. I wanted to slip this in here real quick. Don't well out at all on characters like C3PO or Chewbacca. Characters that come back very quickly, or even like Palpatine Yoda, they come back like every couple of months, and you can unlock them at five stars. There's really no point to spending large portions of money to get seven star first time around. It's not really going to influence you in the way you think it is going to. Just pick up the five star, put a little bit of gear on them, max it out next time, it's fine. All right, try number two. Come on. Hey, there we go. So now we've covered packs. I'm going to cover what I'm going to call conditional purchases, which are purchases that are based upon um, the cadence or your current timeline of when you started the game. Now, I'm going to explain that a little bit better. So what I mean by that is, let's say you started the game three months before Jedi Knight Revan. You begin the farm. You get to the level 85. You're there. You're close to Jedi Knight Revan, but you're not going to be able to obtain them. You're a vault away. This would be the perfect time to well out because that vault in efficiency is going to do astronomically better than just a general vault towards gear or something of that nature. This has mainly been the strategy I personally have used. Every time I've done a vault, it's been like a major event. I did do a vault for the original Jedi Knight Revan. I believe he cost me a total of like 120 over the period of time. And I did do the marquees. So it wasn't even the entirety of a vault to get him. Darth Revan was even less than that. I did hoard crystals for him. I think he was like a total of like $60 total, including the marquees. So the marquees have helped pay me out a lot where it didn't really cost that much overall. Um, to give you an idea, I didn't really well out on anybody else. I mean, I would definitely went well out on journey events like CLS or JTR, but it's probably worth it for the Revens. Basically, anything that's going to get you repetitive source of income, like Squad Arena, Fleet Arena, I mean, you know, there's an argument to be made the Millennium Falcon is another event that would be wellable. So let's talk about a few non-character shard things you can purchase that aren't really for events. Let's say you got a new character. Uh, some of the other things you can purchase are like gear. And there's only certain things that I really like purchasing with gear. Now, if you're super, super early, like level 40 to 60 or something, these actually aren't a terrible purchase. Otherwise, you don't want to purchase these Mark III projectors at all. You also never ever want to purchase these Mark IV projectors because you get them in tank full fairly commonly. You're never going to want to purchase Mark III Bacta Joes, though the Mark IVs are okay if you really desperately need one. But the Mark III's, uh, you get full pieces as well, and eventually you're going to have thousands of those. So I'll show you here, like Mark III Bacta Joes, you're never going to want to buy these. You're never going to want to buy the Mark IV projectors because you're going to end up stacking on those. These Mark III projectors uh, are on quite a bit of hard node farms, but later in the game, so they're not terrible early. So there's a few things you just really don't want to purchase. Now, things you do want to purchase are like full completed pieces that are cheaper. For example, if you look at like the Mark V furnace, obviously the, uh, the total pieces to make this are more expensive than if you just purchase the total piece. Or every now and then I'll purchase uh, golden eyeball uh, component pieces that are the cheaper, like the 25 for 375, same with med packs, etc. I'm not gonna go deeply into gear um, because that is a separate video in and of itself. However, try to purchase only the efficient gear uh, crystal per item if you are attempting to well out on gear. Also, I should say buying gear is more of a late game strategy. It's well mid to late game. As you're developing your roster, you need gear more and more to fill out the characters because you tend to get characters quicker than you actually get the gear. Um, so if you look, and I have a bunch of gear 12s here, but I have a ton of characters that still need gear. So for this reason, in the beginning stages, it's probably better to stick to getting shards, using refreshes, things of the nature that are going to help you expand your roster before you start building the roster up, if that makes sense. So just to kind of recap and reiterate what's going on, if you are going to well out, it's best to well out just on flat crystals. Buying a vault is always your most efficient. If you are going to use that vault, try to use it in a manner and time in which it's going to benefit you the most in repeatable income, meaning fleet arena, squad arena, even raids, things of that nature. As far as packs go, you're going to want to ignore the flat bundle packs. The $5 starter pack can be a good offer, and the $6.99 Night Sister pack is, in my opinion, one of the best packs in the entire game. 
All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope that some of this information has been useful, if not all of it. And I would like to thank you for watching the video. More so, I wanna thank you for the subscribers as we've hit 1,000 subs. And uh, I'll try not to make it too long, but I just wanna say thanks and I really appreciate it. We've hit the, the first immediate goal. And so that's been really exciting, as well as I need to give a shout out because I owe one to my first and only Patreon subscriber, Dark Side Inside. So thanks for that. I didn't expect one. All right, guys, have a good day.